We give all praise and honor and glory to Yahweh Shemiah Shai. We give double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone. Peace and shalom to the like that's pushing out this word throughout the four corners of the globe. It's your brother Shema Amaf. Shalom to you. Hope you're in good spirits. When we Salakin. When we look, Salakia, when we look at the Bible and we read the Bible, um, Yahweh Shah spoke in parables. And when we look at this word parable, you go to the Etymology Online Dictionary, it says a parable is an allegorical or metaphorical narrative, usually having a moral for instruction, having a way of something, a teaching. It says saying or story right here. You see saying or story in which something is expressed in terms of something else. Um, a comparison. Right. When you compare two things against each other to give a sense of of what you're trying to convey. It says a comparison parable, literally a throwing beside, a juxtaposition alongside, right? So when you put up one thing, you put up another thing right next to it and you tell a story and how these two ideas or these two uh, instruments or objects Convey what you're trying to say. And the Lord, Yahweh Shai, he always was very spiritual when he spoke in the parable. So let's get to the scripture. Let's get to the parable. One parable. He spoke many parables. Um, it was prophesied that he would speak in parables. And we're going to see why. Why did he speak this way? Why did he always had men and women think when he spoke? comparison stories right a comparison story just made you think and this is what a lot of people don't want to do when it comes to the Lord is to think and to compare and to contrast okay this is Mark 4 and 1 it says and he began again to teach by the seaside this is Yahweh who the world and he calls uh, Jesus and there was gathered unto him a great multitude so that he entered into a ship and sat in the sea and the whole multitude was by the sea on the land. And he taught them many things by parables and said unto them in his doctrine, hearken, behold, they went out a sower to sow. This is the idea. This is what this is beginning of what he's. Um, want to put a picture in your mind to give an understanding of what he's trying to convey. So you have to put in your mind the sower. Someone's planting. And it came to pass as he sowed, some fell, some what? Some seeds fell by the wayside. And the fowls of the, of the air came and devoured it up. And some fell on stony ground. So you should post some picture this in his head. When he's speaking, he's speaking in pictures so it can be um, an an object or um, a, a understanding through pictures in your head. Think about what I'm what I'm what I'm about to say. And if you didn't know him, he wanted to convey a message because it says up here it says he spoke to them in his doctrine the way he had to the way he was prophesied to. It says some some fell on the stony ground where it had not much earth and immediately it sprang up because it had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, it was scorched and because it had no root, it withered away. And some fell among thorns and the thorns grew and choked it and it yielded no fruit. So you're thinking, okay, you know, this guy's, whoever's doing the sowing, the sower, right? He's planting and certain things is happening. The other fell on good ground and did yield fruit that sprang up and increased and brought fruit, some 30, some 60, some 100. 
And he said unto them, He that has ears to hear, let them hear. That's it. What was he trying to convey? What was the message? When If I'm listening to a person and he's talking about a sower, and he said some fell on stones, some didn't have enough earth, some fell on good ground and yielded an increase. What, am, what, what is he talking about? Verse 9 says, And he said unto them, He have had ears, let him hear. So basically you need an understanding of what he's trying to say. The Lord gives that understanding because he would open up the understanding, the parable, the metaphorical objects to comparison of what he's trying to convey. Let's go back to this word parable because we read in the Edomon parable. Let's look up what the blue letter said about parable. Parable, right? Strong's G, 3850, Parabole, Parabole. A placing of one thing by the side of another, comparison, juxtaposition, as of a ship in battle, right? Two contrasting sides. Metaphorically, right, it says a comparing, comparison of one thing with another likeness of similitude, an example by which a doctrine or precept is illustrated. That illustration is that picture in your mind of this sow a sow and seed. A narrative, right? A story, fictitious, but agreeable to the laws and usages of human life. How does this play out in your life? Are you planting seed among thorns? So you would have to ask yourself, if you're a spiritual man, what am I sowing? Picture me doing that. What I'm sowing on thorny ground. I'm sowing on ground that doesn't have soil. But some soil takes the seed and gives increase. It says, by which either the duties of men or the things of, of Yahweh, particularly the nature and history of God's kingdom, are figuratively portrayed. An earthly story with a heavenly Meaning he spoke this way always to get you to understand. And this is why we have to read these parables to get an understanding of what is the meaning of the story. It's instructive, right? A pithy and instructive saying involving some likeness or comparison and having perceptive or admonitory force. You have to have that. You have to have those tools to perceive. This is why he said, let them hear. Whoever have ears, let them hear. Because it's not relatively available that everyone have the tools to understand the spiritual stories. And that's the point. This is what a parable is. He taught them many things, right? So, he said in verse 10, uh, the scripture said in verse 10, Mark said, And when he was alone, they that were about him with the twelve asked of him the parable. What, what, what was that that you were saying? What, what are you talking about? And he said unto them, Unto you it is given the mystery of the kingdom of, of Yahweh, but unto them that are without, all these things are done in parables. You see? The word of the Lord, the tools, the understanding, the perception, to perceive the understanding, the mystery, the comparison, the juxtaposition of the story, which is, he was speaking of, the kingdom of heaven. Yahweh has to give this to you to understand. Those other people are not going to understand. Verse 12 says that seeing they may see and not perceive. Wait a minute. I'm going to see it, but don't see it. And a lot of people say that when they come up to the camps and, they, and you see in the videos and you see in the scriptures that people heard the Lord. They saw the miracles. 
They saw the things he'd done. They heard the messages, but it just didn't register. Same thing in on the, on the streets and the camps and, and the comments on your videos. There are some, there's more than some, that will not understand what the scriptures are conveying because it was not given to them. It's just that simple. They may look the part, play the part, be the part, even though they may be, even know that they are Israelites, but still can't see the big picture. And the Lord wants to illustrate through his words, through his comparisons, the big picture in your mind and your spirit so you can get an understanding of what your how about Shimei and Shai represent and your position and responsibility in knowing and what was given to you to give to someone else for an understanding. Give them a picture and an idea in their head spiritually. It says right here, that seeing that they may that they may see and not perceive and hearing that they may hear and not understand, least at any time they should be converted and their sins should be forgiven them. So that means all sins can't be forgiven if you don't understand, if you can't see. If you can't see, you can't hear the, the spiritual message that the Lord has given to you. Your sins won't be forgiven. They would not be forgiven because just that simple. It's just that simple that you would not be able to receive salvation. And he said unto them, know ye not this parable? Don't you understand? And how then will you know all parables? The sower saw of the word it's not talking about no seeds. He's comparison. He's comparing. Though so and so of the word, the words of Yahweh Shemel Shai, the understanding, the breakdowns, the future, the prophecies, the law, the statue, give you understanding of what the laws and statutes and how we uh, uh, um, develop and continue our own government and our people, governing our people and leading them the right way. This is done by the word and we sow the word into good ground. It says, and these are they by the wayside where the word was given, sown. But when they have heard, Satan cometh immediately and take away the word that was sown in a heart. Satan is the adversary. Satan is the adversary. So everything that Yahweh wants to sow. Satan comes and takes it away from those who it ain't for. And these are they likewise, which are sown on stony ground, who, when they have heard the word, immediately receive it with gladness. Yes, they have no root in themselves and so endure, but for a time, just for a time, a season, Afterward, when after and when affliction and persecution arises for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. All of a sudden, oh, you talking about Deuteronomy 22? What about Deuteronomy 21? All of a sudden, now the word is offensive because it fell on stony ground. Or you want to do just or hear or receive just the good things in the scripture. But what happens in the case of something opposite that? Now you don't want to receive it. Oh, it don't mess with my spirit. I, I can't get with that. We're not doing that. You have to take the good and the bad, the, the good and the bad, the sour and the sweet. Sweet as honey in your tongue, right? It says right here. Likewise, they're sown. What well, it says, uh, they have no root in themselves. Afterward, affliction and persecution arises. All of a sudden, now the sweet that was in your mouth, learning the word, all of a sudden now becomes bitter. 
Oh, I don't want to deal with that part. Just talk about, you know, Jacob have I loved and God loves everyone. But when you get to the, he hates people and their sins and their ways. Well, I don't want to deal with a God like that. All of a sudden now it becomes bitter. And these are they which are sown, verse 18, among thorns, such as hear the word and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches and the lusts and the lust of other things entering in, choke the word and it becomes unfruitful in you because you got ulterior motives when you hear this word because of the cares of this world. And these are they which are sown in good ground, such as hear the word and receive it and bring forth fruit. Remember that increase and some 30, some 60 and some 100. And this is what you give. This is what's being shown of what come of the word that was planted in you. This is what you give. This is the increase for someone else to now nourish on. Now your tree grows and, and bring forth fruit. Now someone else could bring uh, uh, um, now someone else could bring that someone else to your tree and eat. Let's all eat together now. But if you being choked or stifled or withered away or um, uh, 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 what you would say um, detoured from the truth because of Satan and cares of this world, you have no shade, no shelter for no one else. You don't even have protection of yourself because your leaves are going to wither away. Your fruit can't bring forth more fruit. It all comes from the seed. The seed is the kingdom of heaven. Constantly, constantly nourishing and enduring, nourishing and enduring, nourishing and enduring. You see, this is the parables that Yahweh spoke. He spoke in these in these uh, uh, sayings, these comparisons to get you to understand deeply the ways of Yahweh Shimeh Let's get this real quick. We'll leave you off with this. This is uh, Psalms seventy-eight. In verse one, it says, give ear, O my people, to my law. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. That's the seed, right? I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings of old, which we have heard and known. And our fathers have told us. So it's nothing new about enduring. Bringing forth fruit. Enduring. Having someone else eat. Enduring. Bringing forth fruit. Someone else can eat. Someone else could bring, someone else could come and you give your fruit and his fruit and their fruit. We all eat. We all live. We all constantly endure and live. We will not hide them from their children, showing to the generation or shewing to the generation to come the praises of the Lord, Yahweh Bashim Shah, and his strength and his wonderful works that he has done. This is that tree, this is that fruit constantly, over and over, through generation and generation. We know this, but we forgot this because of our sinful ways. Cares of the world being choked by thorns and and, and adversaries of the word. For he has established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which he have commanded our father that they should make them known to their children. This is that, like a tree, constantly enduring, every season, coming back, blossoming, bringing forth fruit so others could eat. Right? Leaves fall off, leaves fall off winter come, it seems to die, but it comes back the next season. So we can eat and continue growing. This is the word. This is how the word of the Lord is. It's like a tree. It's like a tree planted by the rivers of water, constantly giving forth fruit. 
so we could eat and live and continue growing. Verse 6 said that the generation to come might know them, even the children which should be born, who should arise and declare them to their children. See, that's that constant, constant. Not fall, not, not the, 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 the falling off on the wayside. We're talking about continued growing, growth. This is the, the kingdom of heaven is within us. Verse 7, that they might set their hope in Yahweh and not forget the works of Yahweh. Remember, Yahweh Shai is a work of Yahweh. This is Yahweh Shai is the greatest work of Yahweh. Greatest work is not planting a tree or making the earth, it's creating Yahweh Shai. That's the greatest work of Yahweh. And that's just what we know of. What about the things? That, let's continue on. That they may set their hope in Yahweh and not forget the works of Yahweh, but keep his commandments and might not be as their fathers, a stubborn and rebellious generation, a generation that not that set not their heart aright and whose spirit was not steadfast with Yahweh. Let's look up this word steadfast. It was not steadfast with Yahweh. Steadfast. Aman, support, confirm, be faithful. To be steadfast is to be faithful. Confirm, nourish, uphold. It says foster father, foster mother, a nurse. He was, he nursed us. He nourished us. Pillars, supporters of a door. This is what we want to be in the temple of the Lord. Be a pillar in the temple of the Lord. To be established, be faithful, be carried, be and make firm, reliable, trusty. This is what steadfast is. Steadfast with Yahweh. And whose spirit was not steadfast with Yahweh. The children of Ephraim being armed and carried bows turned back in the day of battle. They, they didn't fight. They kept not the covenant of Yahweh and refused to walk in his law and forgot his works and his wonders that he have shown them. This is why we continue. This is, this is why the Lord spoke and said, let them who have ears, let them hear. Whoever have ears, let them hear, which is understanding. This is the understanding the works of Yahweh by Hashem Shai through parables, through comparisons, so we could get a better understanding and remember back and never forget. We give all praise and honor and glory to Yahweh Shai. Double honor to the elders and the apostles, great millstone. Peace and shalom.